Hello, thank you all for joining us today. I am so excited to have Gabriel with us for the Detox Journey interviews. He is like man of all traits, right, Gabriel? You do recording, you do like construction. You tell us a little about yourself. Well, yeah, my my biggest passion is music, of course. Um, but since I had my health issues, um, I I have other passions too right now. But at the site, I do some work with my family business. So yeah, that's basically what I'm doing right now. Yeah, yeah what you got going on in the yeah in your yeah. life? Awesome. Well, oh, you know, and it's a funny story I want to share with uh, the people who watch this because I know that they'll they'll get it. Um, you know how you have those synchronistic kind of moments? Well, it's funny because um, I was watching one of Gabriel's videos, I don't know, what was it, a month or so ago? And um, when we got to talking, I realized he was the producer of the video. It was an out of body experience <laughs> video. So <laughs> it's just so funny how, you know, things sync up like that. So mm -hmm. I will link that above so you guys can check that out if you're into that kind of thing. All right, let's get into it. Mm -hmm. um, let's talk about how you got started on this health journey and what kind of things you were facing health wise that made you get interested in detox. Yeah, so maybe i should say that it all began at my birth i had a, a birth defect in my heart uh, called um, uh, aort aortic stenosis aortic stenosis uh, sorry for my english it's not the best one but i try my best okay um yeah and i had like an open heart surgery at four at age four yeah so they had to do some weird uh, procedure in my heart and yeah, so since then, uh, I had a lot of health issues, like in terms of allergies, skin issues, maybe I can risk to say also mental issues, not severe issues, but I was also, I was like feeling like um, so, some kind of anxiety, um, like I was not like other people, you know, like yeah. it's a feeling like you are mentally not like the other people. Yeah. And along the way, I, I was always developing new issues. Um, until I was 17, my heart was again bad. So I had to have another open heart, sur heart surgery where they replaced um, two uh, valves of my heart. Wow. Yeah. So um, they used like a valve from another person uh, into my aortic uh, valve. And then I had to use my um, pulmonary, you know, it was. It's a bit complicated, yeah, but they used my own pulmonary valve to replace the aortic valve, and in place of the pulmonary valve, they used another person's valve. I don't know why they have to do that, but they had to like uh, uh, destroy one of the good valves to to use on to the bad valve. Yeah, wow. so it was it was a complete it was a complicated procedure and risky. Yeah, it was. Yeah, that's very that major surgery definitely yeah 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 it was it was i remember it was um I, at that time i i was i trusted doctors you know so i was not like worried i was like okay it's just another stay in one week at the hospital they do what they have to do and then i go play and have fun again you know yeah, yeah. <laughs> so was it was it an emergency situation where they had to operate on you right away or was that a planned procedure how they thought they would fix your birth defect um it it was a planned procedure they somehow expected that things would go bad again with my heart it's amazing so well thank goodness you uh got through all those surgeries that's completely major that like yeah, but that was, that was minor uh, compared to what happened after, you know. <laughs> so tell, tell us more about that then. Yeah, so after that surgery, um, that's when uh, more stuff began to happen. Uh, so uh, my skin issues were worse. Um, my um, my uh, physical strength uh, was worse too. Um, and I had a lot of allergies, so I began do, uh, doing treatments, uh, vaccines for allergies. I don't know if they do that in the U.S., but 
Uh, like they have vaccines for everything nowadays. <laughs> yeah, 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 of course. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I, I had to do that. And then I was diagnosed with um, four lung cysts. And I had to do a lot of um, CT scans. Uh, it's, yeah, CT scans where they used um, contrast, uh, which is um, a metal called uh, gadolinium. I think that's the name. Yeah, and, and you know what? I'm not sure of the current correct pronunciation of it, but I know exactly what you're talking about. And I know a lot of people um, have bad effects from that too. Yeah. Yeah. So um, that this all happened like six or seven years ago. And along the way, I had a chronic um, uh, irregular heartbeats. Um, so it all happened at the same time, I had irregular heartbeats, lung cysts. I was doing the CT scans every year. I was having anxiety attacks, panic attacks. Um, I was having major insomnia, couldn't sleep, uh, acid reflux. Um, oh my God, so much, so much stuff. That's a lot of stuff to go through. Oh my goodness. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. And with the with the contrast on the CT scans, I always felt worse after. Wow. Um, yeah yeah and then i was having major back pain i i was having problems to play the guitar to do my gigs uh, with the bands um so i could I, I had to play like sitting uh, see i had to play uh, while sitting you know wow yeah yeah with the back pain so it was everything was happening uh, right there five years ago five six years ago and the past, yeah, and then because of the insomnia, um, uh, an emergency doctor put me on benzodiazepines. Okay, uh, so some kind of um, medication to help sleep. Yeah, yeah. And because of my heart, I was also taking um, uh, a medication called beta blocker, which, okay. uh, yeah, which uh, I think it's, it blocks uh, um, uh, adrenaline uh, to release from the adrenals. So... I was on that medication for seven or eight years. Wow. So, so yeah. I wonder if that's some kind of adrenal suppressant. And you, it sounds like you definitely had adrenal problems too. Yeah, but they put, they, yeah, yeah, they put me on the medication because um, they wanted me to have always a low um, heart pressure and, and um, less heartbeat so that it won't put um, um, strain on my heart. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, wow. Yeah. 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 It's yeah. Um, so after the um, the medication for the insomnia and for the for the anxiety, um, it, I I was one night I was googling and I was just um, trying to know what this medication does, and I saw a lot of horror horror stories, and I was on that medication maybe for ten nine or ten months, and when I tried to wean off of them. I got major depression, which I never had. I had it, but it was low. I was never conscious of it. But I really felt when I went off that medication, I got depressed. I got some neurological uh, symptoms like pins and needles on my skin. Um, and that was when real hell began. Yeah. That was three in 2014, three, four years ago. Yeah. That was when that's what got started you on this journey, looking into it, huh? Yeah, yeah, trying to find out how to get off the medication. Um, I joined Facebook groups uh, for benzodiazepine withdrawal, how to win off of them. So it took me four months to to do the withdrawal. And then I, I spent, after I finished that medication, um, I spent three months on in my room um, because I, I, I developed major mental issues, everything, everything. You can name wow. it. Wow, major Dep side effects from that. Yeah, huh? yeah, depersonalization, um, depression, severe depression, and extreme, extreme anxiety, um, insomnia, like not sleeping for four or five days straight. Wow, <laughs> oh my pure goodness. Hell. Yeah, yeah, pure hell. Yeah. You went through hell. <laughs> Seriously, oh my goodness. Yeah. So how... Did you get into detox then where you did you you know come across it in your research and or did were you just naturally drawn to the plant based well, after after I googled and after I found out that um, medications do bad 
stuff for us that they don't 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 cure anything that yeah. they suppress. suppress that's yeah. when my mind switched and and i i had to to enter the research mode you know what that mode is like. yeah <laughs> you have like to tunnel vision just yeah going yeah. for it finding the answers yeah because i was physically and mentally suffering but i'm I used to say that I, I was, um, and I am, a strong soul in a weak, sick body and an anxious mind, you know? Yeah. And Yeah, and so my soul was researching. It was like the observer, yeah? It, yeah. It, well, I was researching. So I found out about, um, because at that time, I also developed severe um, um, gastrointestinal issues. I was diagnosed with IBD with chronic fatigue, um, adrenal fatigue too, from a functional medicine doctor, scoliosis, psychosis, my back was so, so bad, um, and the back pain, and I was also having arthritis in my hand, so I couldn't play the guitar anymore. So oh no! My, my body was off completely. Oh yeah. my goodness! It's yeah. just, yeah. When you're uh, taken away from enjoying the little things in life, we are totally drawn to digging deep finding answers and yeah, yeah our soul um, definitely leads us to places for sure <laughs> yeah then on that research mode i found out about uh, the paleo diet and uh, how to help for autoimmune issues so i read a book from i don't remember the name i think it's dr amy myers yeah amy myers and she has a book called the autoimmune solution yeah, so I, I began to changing my diet, removing diary, uh, junk food, you know, gluten, and that somehow helped in terms of allergies, but I was still completely sick, and my neurological issues were going um, worse every time. I began losing my function, not the function, but the feeling in my arms and legs. It was some kind of an MS type of uh, feeling, you know, like yeah. my, my, my nerves were just not functioning. My anxiety was getting worse, and then I was begin. I began to have dizziness and vertigo, and that's when I got really scared. Um, and I, I, I just thought like, I, I, at that time I thought the paleo was the solution, um, but my dizziness and vertigo got so bad, and I reacted very badly also to to broccoli, to all, every sulfur food. I yeah. was having major problems with sulfur food, foods. Yeah, I, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm telling you this about the sulfur because that was uh, the thing that made the connection to Dr. Morse. Yeah, the sulfur I'm just, food. I'm just, I'm just talking um, negative and sad stuff, but I'm smiling because the outcome is amazing too. Yeah, I know, right, guys? Stay tuned to the end because this guy has gone from, <laughs> oh my goodness, how are you still like functioning to, I mean, yeah. It, that's a beautiful journey. I, you know, I knew some of the health problems that you were going through. And, uh, you know, we discussed a little prior and you've shared a little bit, but oh my goodness, you've been to the ringer. <laughs> so yeah, I, you know, sulfur foods are, you know, we're kind of told that they're so good for us, like broccoli, you know, they... They have all these benefits and stuff, but when you really start digging deep into nutrition and you really kind of feel what raw food has an effect on you, the different types, um, the sulfur foods like broccoli and cauliflower and, and what else, cruciferous vegetables, just, oof, man, they really hurt your GI tract. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. yeah, especially when you were um, on antibiotics in the past. Yes. And, and, and I was like, I don't know anyone who took more antibiotics than me. Really. Yeah. You know, I can. Every, every teeth procedure, every procedure that I had to do in my body, I had to take antibiotics because doctor told that if I don't take them, I could have a major infection in my heart. So oh. every little thing that I had to do on my teeth, antibiotics. And yeah, that destroyed, that destroyed my gut completely. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I can just imagine. I mean, a lot of people, and I don't know how it is in, in Portugal, but I know the allopathic practice in the U.S. just very much pushes the antibiotics for everything. You know, the kids have an ear infection, you get prescribed the antibiotic just 
everything, every ailment. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, we know how bad that is. Yeah. But I can't imagine how much, how many antibiotics you've been on. Oh my goodness. Yeah, antibiotics, a lot of medications. I remember at the time where I was at the hospital after the surgery, heart surgery, two, 12 years ago, um, there was one day I remember, I have that picture in my mind, I had to take three times a day, 30 pills. 30 oh. pills. Oh my so gosh. Like 90, 90 pills in a day. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Oh my goodness. Yeah, yeah. So it's just, it's just, I'm trying to just put, put myself in your position. And I don't know. <laughs> I'm really glad that you found health. <laughs> yeah. We no, one, the same man. no one should have to suffer like that. It just, you know, it's, it's kind of heartbreaking that at the same time, like, you know, I really hope that sharing your story helps somebody realize that there's a, you know, different way to live. Yeah. It's a little better. <laughs> there is, there is, and and it's it's, you know, it, when I sometimes I have uh, you you I, I know you are gonna ask me about the spiritual stuff and and yeah the emotional stuff, and sometimes when I remember the times where I was suffering, I can put myself into that skin again, and I cry about it. But what makes me more sad right now, is that I was sick and I'm getting better now, but. I see everyone around me sick and not knowing that they are sick or that they are uh, going into sickness, you know? Yep. And that, that puts me sometimes, I don't know how to tell you, but it's just a sad feeling, you know? It's, it's I, because, I know because, it, because it doesn't need to be like that. It doesn't need to be. I know that feeling so deeply. You're speaking right to my heart right now. Um, this is why I do what I do. It's completely my passion to That's amazing. to share this because you do, you see everyone around you besides the people who are on this path. Um, but you see everyone around you just suffering in one way or another. And it's little things from headache and, you know, being exhausted to big health problems where, you know, people are, going in and, you know, if it's cancer and, you know, having the chemo, the acidicness go (laughs) through their veins, the suffering that they do. And, you know, it's just, it just really uh, can break your heart. It can break your heart so, so deeply because you know, it's, there's such an easier solution and it's just the way you eat. I mean, it takes self-discipline. It's not, the easiest thing, but once you learn it and understand how the body works, there's just there's no reason to suffer. But yeah, you know, you know. yeah, exactly. And 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 the thing is, um, I I'm, I like to read like um um what to tell you uh I don't remember the name um I, I like to read inspiring books and to watch inspiring videos and. Uh, they mention a lot of uh, things like, okay, you have to be mentally prepared, you have to focus, you have to this, to that, but they rarely mention one thing, and that's the one thing that if you have that, you can have everything else, and that's just health. If you have health, you you can have everything. If you don't have that, you can have nothing. It's so true. You guys, yeah. this is such an important point he just made, and I, th- I, you know, I think about that sometimes, and it, it really dawned on me uh, New Year's time when everyone's making their New Year's resolutions and congratulate, you know, and um, saying to people um, their New Year wishes. And it's always has something to do with health. Like, I wish you the healthiest, happiest New Year. Those two things always do go together, health and happiness, always. <clears throat> and you can't have happiness if you're in pain and suffering. There's, you know, this is the answer to happiness on a physical level, on a spiritual level. Like, ah, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I understand so- exactly what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. And I think a lot of people that that gone through um, suffering, they 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 relate to that now. 
but it's like not we just relate to that now because we went to suffering so it's sad to see people that are just not con uh, at the conscious conscious level yeah. and, and that they trust um i like all the conspiracy stuff and you know why I, I like that stuff too yeah <laughs> like people just trust too much in the system in the status quo in the they trust doctors too much uh, they trust the financial system too much they they trust the um, everything you know and 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 they lack the trust in them, themselves and yeah yes and you know what and i can take it a step further too um with uh i went through a big me and my husband went through a big um kind of jump into trusting ourselves and our children even further with um public education uh, we pulled them out of school and unschool them um and it's completely about trusting your children and wow. yeah yeah it's fun well, it's yeah fun. I, I have to talk more about that with you because i'm i'm seeing myself having children soon and and i i, I don't want to, to put them in the normal school system. yeah yeah it's yeah. an indoctrine system yeah you know, some yeah. people are gonna watch this and be like what are they talking about <laughs> but you know maybe we can make a separate video um, yeah, yeah, sure. on uncling or if you have any questions i'd be happy to chat about yeah, that yeah, but yeah. i also want to talk to you about like uh i saw you do cryptocurrencies too which is so fun and yeah. that should be a different video that would be fun <laughs> <laughs> cool cool you know about it yeah yeah i i mean i'm super interested in it and um, I also saw there's some alternative uh, alternative social media where you can, what is it called? Um, Steam? Steam can, is the blog, yeah, decent, decentralized blog. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I'm trying to get into that now. You wow, have to get. Oh, cool. That's amazing. You have also another big thing that's called DTube. It's like DTube. a new. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. And you know what, guys, if you don't know what we're talking about, these are. Um, uh, what should we say? Uncensored uh, social networks where you can post decentralized, your decentralized. Decentralized. They are not controlled by by a group of people or by an entity. It's just like um, everyone that's in the system has an has a a part of it. Yes. So. Yeah. So you know you can upvote somebody's work. Say if you like this video, you can uh, kind of like it basically and you get paid for your comments that you put if people like your comments and the person who posts the video or article um you know giving genuine information that helps support the community um yeah. you can get paid for that too instead of you know getting paid through advertising and mm -hmm. stuff and, yeah. and whatnot so it's really cool um yeah. <laughs> side topic <laughs> very cool though um well let's okay so let's get back into this and let's talk about so when you started detoxing um can you just talk a little bit about what you did you did juicing um you know what was your protocol per se okay so um i got to a point with the paleo diet i was at the time i was living in my parents home i got to a point where i was completely bedridden even going to the bathroom was was like almost not possible and my girlfriend at the time was um, uh, washing me in the bed I couldn't go to do my own washing um, on me yeah so for the last two or three months at my parents home um, I had a lot of pressure from family so I had to find the way at that time there was one night I was so desperate I knew I had weeks to live yeah that was in December 2016 um 15 months ago and uh there was one night i just prayed um and i gave all my faith to god you know and i was never like a god's person um i was spiritual but not a god person and i prayed and at, at that night um two things happened one was um i couldn't sleep so um i was on youtube and a video of dr mars popped up that's one thing I just and the, <laughs> yeah yeah and the second thing was a friend of mine uh, from ireland that now lives in spain uh, told me about dr morse too so two coincidences wow yeah synchronicity for synchronicity. sure and the night before that i had a lot of problems because i ate broccoli and i went to the hospital because of i lost completely my neurological functions couldn't 
they had to put me into the hospital and just wait out until I got somehow better. So um, that video that I found out from Dr. Morse talked about sulfur issues. And that's when my head, like, that's when I got the epiphany, like, okay, this is it. And that's when I, that night I decided, okay, I ditched the paleo stuff and I'm just trying this last thing. Um, so I went straight into eating only oranges because it was the season uh, food and I couldn't go out of home. So I just ate oranges um, and I couldn't also stomach any, not much uh, stuff. I was on supplements from the paleo. Yeah, I had a lot of bags of supplements. Yeah, mm. so I ditched all of that. I ditched the meat and I went straight into eating only oranges and drinking uh, bottled uh, organic grape juice. Wow. Yeah, yeah straight into it, uh, 100%. And my parents got so scary that, that I could die of it. Um, yeah, you know, just eating oranges, oh my God, you're going to die right now. You're mm -hmm. going, now you're really going crazy, you know. Yeah. I was crazy before <laughs> and now you are really crazy. And, yeah. <laughs> and so my dad, I, I know I, at that time I was angry about it, but now I understand why he did it, why he did it. And he told me if I don't get better in a few days, he, he would um, force me into an hospital care into hospital care and I was so scared of that because I had only three alternatives or I would go to the hospital and I would die in a, in a matter of weeks or I could take things into my own responsibility and get out of my parents home and die on my own or I could heal on my own you know yeah. so wow. I, prefer, I prefer this al two alternatives you know so my girlfriend, I told her that my parents would do that and they would force me to the hospital. And she felt intuitively that that couldn't happen. So she took a few clothes of mine and put me into her car. Uh, she dragged me to her car and uh, we, we, got, we, we, uh, we, had, we, go, we got straight to her parents' home. And I lived there for nine months in a beautiful mountain place. Wow. Yeah, and that's where things really began, where the detox really began, yeah. And I, that was a shock for my parents. And yeah, uh, there was a lot of family stuff happening. Um, yeah, so then first three weeks at my uh, parents, uh, um, at my girlfriend's parents' home, uh, just oranges. I they did some construction because they didn't have uh, good conditions for me. They ha they had mold problems. I was very sensitive of mold, um, like a lot of people with allergies and lymphatic issues, as you know. Yeah. So three four weeks only on oranges, always bedridden, uh, buying a lot of herbs from Dr. Moore's, um, uh, just absorbing all his books, his work, videos, like watching ten videos every day. Uh, because they they gave me like the hope you know um it's tr what, true knowledge yeah true, true knowledge and yeah. and also his spiritual talks was like okay this is just a physical body that i'm using i'm just a conscious soul behind all this and let this body do it what it needs so yeah uh, that, that i was full mode on uh, bedridden yeah but doing that stuff um buying herbs and food online yeah <laughs> that's awesome you know and it's funny because um if somebody came to me in your condition that would be exactly the protocol that i would jump right into with them because you're facing life or death yeah yeah um this isn't medical advice for anyone but yeah. um but definitely i mean when you're in a bad way jumping right into grape juice fast and orange juice fast they're the most astringent kind of fruits i mean i yeah. don't think you intuitively could have picked a better like thing to jump into you know <laughs> yeah i had to do it because i had like this was uh, uh, this video could take like five or ten hours you know <laughs> yeah. but yeah but i had i had a major all i had all of those symptoms and all of those so-called diseases and problems and diagnosis but there was one thing that was happening that i i i really needed to constantly drink grape, lemon juice, and oranges because I was having so much kidney pain. I couldn't focus on, the kidney pain was so bad that also my heart was swollen. My heart was, yeah, my, my own heart was getting swollen. 
um, like in, like if you have an edema on a, on a, on the leg, but I was getting it on my chest, and every time I drank the grape juice, my my kidney pain would go worse, but then it would calm like after ten or fifteen minutes, and my swollen my heart uh, the swell the swollen swelling in my heart would go down, so I knew there was a major kidney issue there. Yeah. Know? Um, and all, all those juices and the potassium was forcing my kidneys to work. I was having a lot of pain, but it was working on me, you know, so it was very therapeutic. And yeah. Well, also, this is a good um, kind of segue into what one of my questions would be, would be um, what would were some healing crisis uh, symptoms that you experienced? So super kidney pain, uh, swelling. Well, well, yeah, um, uh, vertigo, um, so so much dizziness, like 24-hour dizziness. I'm still having a little bit of minor uh, dizziness issues, but they are getting like less and less and less. Um, yeah, I had the dizziness. Um, I couldn't stand on my own because of the dizziness. Um, I have I was having um, a lot of gastric reflux, um, spending nights on the toilet having diarrhea like for 20 or 30 times in the night. Um, people could not sleep at home because I was constantly pushing the toilet. <laughs> oh my goodness, huh? Yeah. Getting, the, um, yeah. getting all yeah. that chunk out of yeah. you. Yeah, the fatigue, um, so much fatigue, but then I was having a bit of um, uh, energy. Uh, my, my girlfriend was here. Uh, Hello. This okay, thank you. Thank you, this was it a lot. Hi, nice this, to meet you. This woman <laughs> saved my life. I owe her my life. Wow, yeah. that, is, <laughs> that is amazing. Yeah, we are getting married this year. Oh, Just congratulations. Yeah. Yay. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> I would so, marry yeah. her too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's beautiful too. Beautiful, so beautiful person. Yeah, Yeah, I mean, to take you from the situation that you were in and, and, and help you get back to health, that's beautiful. That's love. <laughs> yeah, this is really this is I, I picture myself doing a book or a movie about uh, this this thing. This uh, is a, an amazing story, and it's completely inspirational. I truly believe the 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 things that we go through in life the that seem so tragic at the time. If you can overcome those obstacles. And then turn around and help your fellow person. Like I, I, I feel like that's the meaning of life. I, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. At, at least that um, I should say. Like, we have a lot of dreams and hopes in life, but the one that that goes behind your ego and everything else is um, being there for someone who really ne needs it, and and making a difference in the life of someone. And that's why I. I me myself i have a lot of dreams and hopes for my ego for everything else but my biggest hope and dream that goes behind my uh, beyond myself is really to inspire people and i don't know maybe someone to be a public speaker or doing writing a book you know um like reaching the message like you are doing right now you are doing that right now you know yeah and I love people like that. I love it. Oh, I totally get it because, um, you know, you're following like a genuine path and I don't know what's better than this healing method. I think this is the top, you know, but <laughs> I don't know if there's anything that's better than this where you can just completely regenerate a healthy body. And especially coming from where you're, you were to where you are now, like, ah, and, and I have so much, and I have so much stuff to tell you. Right? Um, <laughs> yeah, I can, I can go on with, um, with the healing crisis. Like, I was in a constant healing crisis. There was no moment I was feeling good, you know, because I was al already so bad. So I was like dying. So I was like in a constant healing crisis. It was not like a thing, okay, I have to detox here, here and that. No, I just had to do it to be, to survive, you know. And so, how did you have that, um knowing to push through with it um, because some a lot of people when they get into a, a fruit detox um, they abandon ship because they feel these detox symptoms so did you have the knowledge that these things would happen or 
a knowing that you had to push through? Well, I had, of course, the knowledge. Um, Dr. Morris tells about healing crisis and so, but I think how, how did I kept the motivation to do it? It's simple. I think there are two kinds of people. There are people that um, look for good things to happen so that they can go on with their motivation. So they picture themselves in a good state and they go through it. And there are people who have to suffer a lot so that they can keep motivated. And I'm that kind of person, you know? Right. Yeah. So um, I, I had, to, uh, and that, that's the biggest lesson of my life. It's um, I had to go through a deep state of suffering so that I can wake up. And that's exactly what happened. So why and how I did it, it was because I was simply suffering and I had, Absolutely no choice. It was do it or die. Yeah, yeah. simple. Yeah, so I was having all those uh, diarrhea, the vertigo, dizziness, the fatigue, the uh, acid reflux, depersonalization, moments of de deep depressions, mo moments of relief in my depression, my anxiety getting worse, bad, uh, worse, good, worse, better, you know, like it's exactly. a cycle. You, you, and you feel those cycles. Um, but if I have to, and I know you are going to ask me to also about the, um, the one thing that I can tell people that it's important. But I'm going to tell right now that if you focus, people like to focus too much on the kidneys. But in my experience, it's good and it's important to focus on the kidneys. But it's also um, maybe more important to focus on the, uh, on the gut, on the intestinal um, issues. because. When we focus on intestinal problems, they also automatically will help kidney issues. Um, and when you focus only on kidney issues, that doesn't always mean that you are um, cleaning your gut. So I know that I know from my experience that cleaning my gut is is automatically cleaning the kidneys and cleaning everything. Yeah, you know, and um, I know a lot of people that follow Dr. Morris will see that he talks a lot about kidney filtration and that's kind of like his main point yeah um, I think it's just kind of a simple way to let the masses know that your body will start filtering that lymph out when yeah. you when you work on the GI tract I didn't realize how important the GI tract was until I took his uh, level one course mm -hmm. where yeah. he talks a lot about this being the uh, the tree trunk you know the trunk of yeah 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 and you have to get this out. It's, um, I'll put it up here. I'm going to mess it up. <laughs> but um, I'll put the little words across the screen here. Um, you know, there's utilization, um, blah, 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 blah. And um, those are the four things you have to get. In digestion, your digestion, digestion, absorption, utilization, illumination. Yeah. I know it. I know this guy. it. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, that's great. And those are the things that you need. And um, without those, you don't have health. You're completely yeah. right, uh, right yeah. about that. Like yeah. for people to understand that that tip, getting their GI tract situated and in good health is the key to the true health. You're exact. Yeah. Like I 100% I resonate with that. Okay. For sure. Yeah. So um, yeah, because of my gut issues, um, yeah, I was also uh, I, I diagnosed um, I had not a, a specific test, but my GI, GI doctor told me like a few months before I got the major issues that I, I probably had gastroparesis, um, which is which is like um, paralyzed uh, the paralyzation of the the stomach. The stomach just wouldn't work. Wow. Um, so I when I began the detox um, and all those juices and the, the grape juices, lemon juices. The eating the oranges and then I, I, I ate a lot of stuff after that but I felt like this gastroparesis or whatever that is um, it was just mucus and layers layers of mucus sticking to the stomach and to the gut wall um, because when I when I was drinking all those juices I saw so much and I, I'm still seeing it I'm it's like 14 or 15 months later and I, this morning I had a release, I, I told you about that, yeah. <laughs> release of, of, of yellow sulfury mucus. And I had some dizziness with that. And then after the release, I got better. So this is 
And that's why this is not an, an, a journey for everyone. I know it's not for everyone because you really have to suffer a lot and to have a big leap of faith to trust yourself that this is going to work. And the body is always going through cycles. It detoxes, then it detoxes the gut, the kidneys, and then you feel lymph drainage on your head. Then you get moments of and days of dizziness, of a bit of depression, feeling low, and then you feel you burp or you have bloating, and then you see again a release in your gut, and then wow, again uh, drainage of lymph in your head. Um, yes. So this is like a cycle. Your body is constantly pushing things down, down, down. Yeah. I kind of picture it uh, like the. Uh... What is the mathematical um, thing? Is it the Fibonacci sequence? Uh, the Fibonacci. Or, what is yeah. it? You know what I'm talking about? It goes like, um, you know, that's how all life works, where it just goes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, I feel like um, this health journey is kind of like that, where you start with one thing and you go to the next, and you still feel the symptoms of each thing, but it gets better and better yeah. as, it, as you progress through it yeah and that's that's the thing that also kept me motivated because i would go through a, um, a, a worse healing crisis during one week but then i had two days of a better state than before that healing yeah. crisis and i felt like okay i just have to keep doing this yeah, yeah. and and i still feel it today uh, um, this is happening on a weekly basis every week i have one or two days that i feel a bit, a bit lower and then I have some days where I feel, wow, amazing. This is, I feel <laughs> myself again, you know, this is like, I don't need much to be happy as you know this. Um, yeah. uh, of course I have my dreams as I told you, but um, I don't need much to be happy because feeling my own body to getting better and better is my biggest dream, you know? <laughs> I totally, I see myself too. You know, I am still going through detox, but I, I obviously, I wasn't in such a bad way as you and not everyone's gonna experience symptoms for that long it totally I depends so <laughs> i know right some people are worse off though you know some people are going to feel it for years um it it's completely individual but um i'm i think i'm pretty much through the worst of mine i really wasn't that far off but i still have problems i'm working on but i have uh you know hypothyroid yeah, i took the basal wow, yeah. temperatures they're low but they're climbing up climbing up a little bit yeah, yeah i know right it's good and um the thing is you you feel the little tidbits of things through detox it's just what it is it's your body healing itself and you feel yeah. that pain when it's on its way out so don't be scared guys <laughs> exactly that's it whenever you feel some kind of weird symptom pain that you're not expecting it's really at least for me, um, because th again, this is not medical advice, <laughs> but at least for me, it means uh, my body is doing some work and I always celebrate it in my mind. Yeah, totally. And, uh, you know, I, f I feel the, um, it would have freaked me out before where I feel the uh, drainage coming from the head, you know, that you feel it. You're like, it's the weirdest sensation. Yeah, sinuses, the eyes, the, the, um, the ears. ears. You feel like liquids there yeah it's weird yeah no. it, yeah it is and when you feel it, i mean i think normally if people didn't know about this they run to the doctors and be like something's wrong with my head but <laughs> you know i celebrate it now like just visualize it like releasing out my body and you know working towards yeah getting that yeah. out so yeah. it's good stuff have you ever had an iridology reading yeah yeah i had yeah. um that friend that um that uh, told me about Dr. Morse, she was also one of my savers. Um, and she did also an iridology reading. And uh, yeah, it was just like a conclusion of everything that was happening in my body. Um, a lot of really, a lot of sulfur, um, adrenal um, issues, my kidneys. Uh, but it was completely off. Yeah, everything was off. Like, really yeah, bad. so it was very confirming for all the... Yeah, but I... I didn't follow what that iridology reading um, gave me in terms of what herbs, what this, what that, because the herbs was, I, I, I bought a lot of herbs from Dr. Morse, but I, I just took like half of them. Uh, some gave me uh, some symptoms that I really don't uh, like, and I, I just didn't took them, like the lymphatic, um, lymphatic herbs, 
um, and there were also uh, don't remember I deliver herbs um, yeah I just mainly took like uh, kidney um, adrenal uh, glandulars um, adrenal tonic um, heal tea yeah it was mainly adrenal herbs kidney herbs, uh, parathyroids, because if you look at all my symptoms and my so-called diseases, they are all going to relate to my parathyroid. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to point that out. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Like you have the, the arthritis, my back pain, my scoliosis, aphosis, my valve, heart valve problems because connected they have tissue. connected tissue. Um, oh depression. my God, my, my teeth, my teeth, depression, my nails. Um, yeah. So much stuff. Yeah. yeah, it's amazing what um, when your parathyroid is down. It just it literally is amazing to me how much when the parathyroid down and it starts trying to steal calcium from the rest of your body, like how many symptoms can happen because of that. It's, yeah, and and you're right. All of those symptoms relate to that. So so you took a parathyroid glandular. I took yeah. I, I was not happy about taking them because of. Um, they come from animal tissue, um, but I was really in a, a situation. Situation, I I had to take them. Um, yeah. And and I, I the glandulars. Um, people think that's like a voodoo stuff or whatever, but they really work. Yeah. So, so I I took them, the parathyroid and the adrenal um, uh, glandular. Yeah. Yeah, and you noticed that they help. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Really, really. That's but awesome. I. I, I um, uh, when I when I began feeling better, I I stopped them because I I wanted my body to you know yeah to yeah to take me. over to it. It's kind of like yeah. a like a kick in the butt <laughs> trying to get things started. <laughs> oh, I just put it so casually. <laughs> People are gonna watch this video and they are asking right now maybe um, like is he is he really better right now? Um, people are gonna ask themselves because when I watch those videos, I ask myself, okay talking she or she's talking um about uh, the health issues but what about right now so if, yeah. if people are asking that right now i'm currently working again almost full time i have uh, like two or three jobs um uh, i i can walk uh, uh, whole, uh, the whole day without any fatigue um yeah i can talk with anyone without uh, anxiety uh, there are some days i'm not so good but Normally, I'm I'm okay with that. My depression depression is completely gone. My my back no back pain whatsoever. Wow. Um, my my cyphosis, which is like the curvature here, it's gonna it's straightening. It's like every month I feel it more. My back is gonna is getting straight without doing any um, kind of uh, physical therapy. Um, my arthritis is gone. Um, my neurological issues, uh, like dizziness, vertigo, pins and needles, is like 80% gone too. Um, my GI tract is digesting and absorbing again. I gained uh, 12 kilos um, in three months right now, which is like um, 30 20 or 30% of my weight. Um, uh, yeah, so much stuff. Uh, my my skin and my connective tissue overall, my skin is like, I have a new skin right now. Even my girlfriend, when she touches me, she's like, wow, this is like baby skin now. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Um, yeah, my eyes are getting brighter. Um, my, my mind um, is, is more focused. Um, I feel like my brain responds to what I want, you know, like memory stuff, um, like uh, cognitive uh, uh, stuff um yeah everything is getting better ah, and one more thing sorry yeah, to interrupt. Oh, go ahead no um i had a routine uh, schedule uh, appointment scheduled appointment with my cardiologist which happens once a year and she the first thing that she said when she um put i don't know the name in english they put like the thing to hear the oh stethoscope. yeah stethoscope stethoscope yeah, yeah. right um, and she listened, she was like, oh, um, your ha heart arrhythmia, that was like a little heart arrhythmia, I can hear it. And I, I was laughing like, yeah, inside me, I was oh like laughing. Oh my gosh, yeah. wow. And then she, yeah, and she said then, um, also my, I had, um, like we have, we have the aortic. Um, uh, aortic artery? 
yeah, the, the aortic artery that comes out of the heart and you have a root there, the root that, that goes to the heart. And my root of the aortic um, vein was um, dilated. It was getting big and that, does, that is not a good sign. It could give me aneurysms and stuff like that. And she, she did the, the exams um, and she told me that um, it's getting better than uh, last year. So I'm reversing something that she wasn't expecting um, wow. and that she never saw in her life. So, yeah, so I, I hope that in a few years that I have a completely normal aortic root, which could be the first time that's, that, that, hap that, that happens in a hospital here. So wow. I'm really hoping that, that that's going to happen. You know, I don't know if uh, that's happened before, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> I mean, you know, in, um, in modern medicine, that's going to blow people's minds. Yeah, I, I, want, I, re I really want to prove that it's possible to do that. Yeah, you should um, maybe try to get your, um, the pictures of like your ultrasounds and stuff. Yeah, uh, yeah. And, and compare them and totally write a book or do a movie or something because <laughs> it's going to blow people's minds. Guys, did you hear all the things that he reversed and healed? Man, you know, it just, it just makes me so excited. So thankful that you're sharing this story with us. And it just makes me so excited for you to share the achievements that you've had. Because so many times um, in our community, it's focused on starting the healing and getting into it and all the worries that come along with it. But just sharing your accomplishments is inspirational. Yeah. Thank you so much for saying all that. Thank you so much. I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful. Thank you. I'm so, you know, it's just, it just is motivating and inspirational. You were mentioning you had your girlfriend took you out of your family's home. So um, is there family changes and social problems from doing the detox? Um, or is your family, after seeing you heal, are they... You know, um, Along the way, when I was very skinny, of course, people commented all the time. People were commenting, but I had to have a, a detachment of, from those com comments, you know? Yes. You have to get detached from that completely. Because it's, if you're if you going to hear that, you're going to completely destroy your adrenals and they cannot heal. Um, so Such that was, point. yeah, that's very, very important. Um, and if you have, if if some if if a person is suffering a lot from malabsorption and getting too skinny, if that person can find if if you can find a way to completely isolate you from society, that's that's a, that's very good. And I, I found a, a kind of a way to do that in my uh, girlfriend's parents' um, little town. Um, my my own family, uh, I was like uh, I had to completely. Um, get um not detached but um like I, I had to unfriend them on facebook i had to do everything and not responding to phone calls because i i every time they they called me or something like that my adrenals would go down because i had some kind of a trauma that whenever they go into my life they would force me to do things uh, that I didn't want and they would uh, tell me stuff that I knew it wasn't true for me maybe true for them but not for me this is my journey and I'm gonna do it my way and I was so focused so I, I just wanted my family not to be with me that, at that time I knew that when I would get better I would and that's exactly happening right now I have an amazing relationships with my parents right now uh, with my brothers it's okay so and so but uh, yeah, and when you are really focused on detoxing and remove all the suffering in your life, you have also to remove the persons that drain your, your emotional state. After healing and getting back into relationship with them, I'm sure that it's just a feeling that you knew you did the right thing. Yeah. Yeah. But, and it's all about the judgment from people because you are too skinny. Yeah. Um, like when I see someone that's uh, like, um, I know you had weight issues, mm -hmm. but um, sorry for saying, uh, but it's really better to have 
uh, too much weight than having no weight. I yeah. at least I think that because no, people I... don't don't people don't judge you when you are on a diet to lose weight because you have too much weight, right? But when you are doing a diet and you are completely skinny, I was really so so skinny that even I was scared looking at myself at the mirror. You know. Yeah, um, it's a completely different thing. Bones. It was skin and bones, anorexic state. But yeah. I, I, it was not my fault. I couldn't digest anything. And the fruits were the only thing that were getting me better. So fruits, fruits, and then I, I put the salads in with a bit of salt, avocados, but I was still very skinny. Then I did a juice fast for 16 days, and that helped to flush me a lot of stuff and getting me more energy. So the, 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 um, the weight issue, the, the, the getting skinny is uh, very bad in terms of social state because people are going to judge you. Yeah. Everyone, everyone. Yeah. Well, it's good. I'm really happy that you are such an example where you had to go through the malabsorption. You, you, know, you got skinny while you were rebuilding or detoxing your body and, and rebuilding and now you are developing a relationship back with your family um so i just want people to appreciate that because there's so many people um are worried about losing their family but it's not a forever thing you know you just got to focus on you and your health and it's um, not yeah it's not a forever thing and and if it is then it's okay just toxic people in your life just remove them for your yeah. for your for your own yeah health and spiritual wellness and also for your own sanity because yeah. people are really crazy out there right now <laughs> right <laughs> i know <laughs> i mean a lot of people consider us the crazy ones but i don't know <laughs> it's all about perspective <laughs> you must have ha gone through you've talked touched on spirituality a little bit throughout this conversation. And, um, you know, I really love to talk about this because it's something I have found during detox, um, in my own personal experiences and other people's experiences, we detox our physical, our mental and emotional bodies. And it's just a beautiful, like blossoming of spirituality, I feel. So have you experienced that? Yeah. Um, I cried a lot. Yeah. I cried a lot and I still sometimes cry um, and I think it's it's uh, I think like if we feel and think something it's because it's somehow in 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 some cells it has to be in some cells and when you detox your own body your whole body and all those cells are getting um, connected again and they are re releasing stuff and this happens i had a lot of crying spells because when i when i got like some uh, major gi pain or symptom and i felt like mucus coming literally feeling the mucus detaching from my gut walls at the same time i was getting in a state like oh i need to cry and if i cry i'm gonna feel better and it the crying were um, it was amazing it was not like a crying of despair of um, of uh, sadness it was like a crying of why oh, yeah, I, I need to cry and and my girlfriend was asking why are you crying right now at four <laughs> at four in the morning why you wake up and cry and i told i tell her just i don't know i have to cry and after 15 or 20 or 30 minutes of crying i f i felt better you know and and it always it always came um, unexpected um, and I, I have to admit, uh, this almost happens again today. Um, and I was like thinking when that was happening, I was like, oh my God, if Rook is going to uh, ask me that question, I have to tell that. So I you did know, not cry. I did not cry because I was working in the studio, but <laughs> I, I felt like crying again. Um, and it's just like, yeah, you, you have all those traumas, you have, have all those issues that happen in your uh, actual physical life. And I also believe that we have a lot, of, a lot of karma. I believe I have really a bad, 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 bad karma <laughs> that, I, that I'm fixing in this life, you know? And so the crying spells are constantly happening, but they feel amazing. They are amazing. I love them. I love when I, because at the same time when I'm crying, I'm, I'm feeling connected to God, you know? But when I'm outside hustling, working, thinking about life, this physical life, 
worrying also about normal stuff, normal day-to-day -day stuff. Um, I forget about God. But when I am, I'm when I'm alone again in and at bed and having some kind of uh, healing crisis or whatever, or even when I'm not having healing crisis, I have I I need I need to feel that that thing that that just makes you I don't know connected. It's very, yeah, it's it's very hard to explain, but it's like a feeling like okay, I trust you so much, God, you know, and yeah. then I and then I remember that we all are. And that's, that's one thing that I loved about Dr. Mars because it was a question that I had from since I was a, ki a kid that what is God? And now I understand what God is. We are just an expression of God, every one of us. And I love that. Guys, <laughs> you know, Gabriel, you are such a spiritual being. You touched on so many points that are just absolutely truth. <laughs> like um, ourselves holding these emotions, whether from past lives or from, you know, our life, ourselves holding the suffering. And we have, when we detox it on a physical level, as exactly what I'm talking about, is you are detoxing it on an emotional level. You're completely releasing everything. And we feel these emotions as they're going out. And Spiritually, when we realize that we are God, we are just God living different expressions, different, rea you know, these different expressing itself. Uh, it's just this, it's this, this really beautiful thing. When you can stop, when you can be the observer, when you can be connected with it all. Yeah. <laughs> I just, yeah. 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 You know, can, I, can, I, can I ask you a question? Yeah. Do you see often the numbers uh, one one together two two and three three? Yes, I see yeah. them all the time, especially yeah. especially lately. Um, I've been on quite a spiritual journey myself, and this it, detoxification was one of the reasons why I got into it because I was um, very connected spiritually, and I have been my entire life, and um, I was doing uh, chakra balancing for people all over the world and um, just getting these psychic kind of things where I would see, you know, maybe their past life. I would see why they're having these problems that they're having in this life. Yeah. And I ended up at that time yeah. I was eating uh, a healthier standard American diet, but I still was consuming meat. And I think, um, you know, I don't want to, anyone to take offense to this, um, yeah. but I think that we take in that suffering and, and we feel that on a cellular level. So when we do detox, yeah. Yeah. Those. but, um, yeah. yeah, I had some bad things happen. So, um, I had to stop myself and, and really feel like I needed to be more connected with who I was and um, detox on a spiritual level. So it's really, um, Oh, this is so amazing. I just felt like a good sigh of relief, you know, <laughs> like <laughs> a connection because you, we're, uh, it, when you can stop and when you can recognize with another soul that we are one, just how beautiful is that? Like, and how amazing is it that we're talking and, um, you know, expressing this to all these people that are going to watch it. It's just yeah. kind of mind boggling. It's, beautiful and yeah i love it too and i love to speak about this uh, because every day I, I i encounter people that are suffering and i you know i i know this happens to you and to everyone that knows about this i i i risk to call it the truth yeah to heal this way because i i tried uh, i i didn't mention but I, but i tried every kind of alternative and conventional stuff to heal like injections ivs b12 shots um, ozone therapy, um, oh my God, so much stuff, but, and nothing worked, nothing, just this worked. So I, I can risk to call it the truth, but you, I want to, uh, you, you told, you, you were telling me about the meat and spirituality. Um, I, no, I, I, I know that from a lot of vegan people and the vegan community, um, they, they, think that it's impossible to be spiritual on a meat-based diet. I don't believe that. Yeah. 
But I believe that if people that are good people and spiritual on a meat diet, they can be 10, 10 or 100 times more spiritual and more connected if they ditch the meat out. Exactly. That's exactly my point. Thank you so much for clarifying that because I, you know, I was just my example. I mean, you can be spiritual. I mean, I was connecting with people. I was doing good work. I was doing good spiritual healing um, on an, on an incredible psychic level. Um, you know, if people get weirded out by that, sorry, <laughs> but um and, you know, it just came to me. It wasn't something I sought out. It was just something that was occurring as I was connecting with people and working with them spiritually. And I was eating meat at that time. You know, you can be a spiritual person and do that. I just needed to take it on another level because I another knew level. I needed, I knew I needed to get there health wise and just spiritually. I mean, when you're putting in the highest consciousness, you can fruit you you know you feel it on all levels and physically emotionally spiritually yeah. it's yeah. the highest levels you can get it is. that i and know of <laughs> yeah 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 me too i agree 100 percent with that and and also um uh you didn't ask but um i i have an opinion about also raw and cooked um can i express yes please like, yeah, yeah that'd be great so i was uh, for 14 months, 100% raw, juicing every day. Um, but um, I wanted to test out, um, I was also a bit dogmatic. Oh, this is, this is working, I'm gonna be raw for life, you know? But once I got to a point that I knew I could maybe digest some cooked food, I wanted to try it out. And for the past um, two months, I'm eating um, a sweet, uh, sweet, uh, steamed sweet potatoes. That's the only cooked food that I eat. Uh, maybe some zucchini and carrots, sometimes cooked too. Um, and I think cooked food can have uh, a place in raw foodies, depending of the circumstance and where you live, and if you can still thrive on it. So I feel the sweet potatoes are helping me. Uh, at least in an emotional state and in my day-to-day -day, um, hostel. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I, now I now I can test myself out uh, when I'm one week raw, and then when I eat sweet potatoes in my salads. And yesterday I was 100% raw. Today I ate uh, some sweet potatoes with my salad at lunch, and I felt immediately um, uh, during the afternoon. Um, that it's not the same state as yesterday when I was 100% raw. There is a difference, and I feel the difference. But it really the decision to eat some cooked food. It really depends on on all the circumstances in your life, your emotional state, your physical state, your surroundings, your um, day to day job life. You know, um, and that's a decision that, uh, and also the, the the cravings. But I don't call it the craving. I can go on without the sweet potatoes but the circumstance calls for it and i and i still feel the detox because um the juicing the, the juicing is the one thing that i do it every single day yeah that's great yeah and i totally um i totally believe that too i have cooked um vegetables often sometimes i feel like i need it emotionally um so i just you know i let myself i don't feel like i need to not eat it um and sometimes i feel like um i need it for grounding because sometimes you just get so um so spiritual <laughs> i know and yeah that, that's yeah 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 it, it, it you know that that's funny because if i'm completely raw i somehow lose kind of an interest on the on, you know, on this, uh, on the normal, physical so -called level, -called normal life, you know, yes. like you have to work, you have to, to, to create, you have to yes. this, that, uh, to be with people. So yeah, you know, yeah. And, but when you're completely raw, yeah. Yeah. That you lose some kind of somehow the interest to, to do so much stuff. Yeah. And I you know. just want to <laughs> like, you just want to live in a bungalow, uh, to have food trees <laughs> behind to have a, a girlfriend or a boyfriend <laughs> and to make some kids to chill out, to eat fruits and to, to dance, to, yeah. So 
but when you eat some cooked food, it just somehow grounds you. Like, okay, please put your feet on the ground again, okay? <laughs> <laughs> yes, no, I completely understand what you mean. <laughs> yeah, well, sometimes we need that, and I don't yeah. see it being as a bad thing, because it really, it's not. It's yeah, not. yeah, it's a good thing. It's, it's really important to have that balance. Well, Gabriel, this has been an amazing interview. I am so thankful to chat with you. I know. (laughs) I know. But I think that we should do this again because I think we have either some topics that we can talk about um, or, you know, and like an update, you know, maybe down the road. Yeah, an update would be great because I'm still um, working on my healing. Um, I have, I have. Um, I want to be able to run. I'm, I can run now, but maybe just for one minute and then I get my adrenals go a bit down, you know, and I begin to sweat a lot. I'm still having problems to sweat, um, but it's also not warm here right now. Um, the weather was not good the past few months. Um, I, my dizziness is not completely healed, but it's getting better too. Um, my muscles are a bit weak because for the past three years I'm I I did any I did not any physical uh, exercise, so there are some some healing to to happen. Yeah. Yeah, well, that sounds great, and I bet you're gonna have a lot of um, since you you're still detoxing. Um, you know, you're gonna go through that process of detoxing a little bit, and then you can start building back up to like with your muscles, and um, you know, getting some maybe some vegetables in. You know, a little bit more of that will give you some amino acids. Do you want to tell people where they can find you if they'd like more information from you? Well, uh, maybe just add me on Facebook. Um, yeah, I, I'm always um, whenever I can, I'm available to to respond to to any question or whatever. Um, or follow me on Instagram. I I I I don't. I'm not like a big uh, social media um, kind of guy. But um, Instagram is Gabriel Bliss. And I have my blog, but it's in Portuguese. Um, yeah. Well, if anyone um, is native in Portuguese, then they can. You can send me the link. I'll put it under yeah. there. Cause I I think it's it's having some problems right now with, with the images, but I I will fix it soon. I, re- I just remembered I have a second YouTube uh, where I have um, translations of Dr. Moore's videos that I did when I was uh, detoxing and bedridden. So I, I occupied my time doing translation in Portuguese for, the, for Dr. Moore's videos. Okay. Yes. You know what? And I've totally come across those, of course, because I'm a Dr. Moore's YouTube binge watcher. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've mean, totally true. seen the yeah. translation ones in in Portuguese. Yeah. So um, that's so funny to to once again have a synchronicity of how our paths have crossed. <laughs> 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 so that's awesome. I will link that down below too. Make sure you get me those, um, Gabriel. All right. And um, mm-hmm. be sure to subscribe to Shattering Norms. You'll have more interviews, uh, detox journey interviews. Um, hit the little bell so you don't miss the notification. And you'll also follow my um, personal detox journey. It's nothing big like Gabriel's, but it's a little something. <laughs> no, no it's, it's, everyone has his, his uh, own journey. So Yeah, yeah. Every, and and um, whatever each of us go through, we can turn around and help whoever's going through something like similar. So, um, so yeah, and different educational videos. So be sure to watch out for that, you guys. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you for being here and thank you, Gabriel, so much again. If you ask me right now again, what could be the one thing that I could advise to people? Um, uh, I have to tell you, I have to say three things, not just one. It's impossible to just say one. But the number one thing maybe is having faith. Before everything, before the detox, before everything, it's faith. If you have that, you can do, you can have everything else. So even before health, you have to have faith in yourself and in God. And after that, um, maybe the one number one tip for detox um, that works for me, and I see it working on a lot of people in spite of a lot of controversy right now, is the juicing. The, the juicing helps a lot because of the, the constant flushing and flowing and nourishing of your cells. So it helps to detox and it helps to nourish at the same time and to um and to um not give too much strain on the digestive system so you 
you have more uh, energy to recover. So the juicing is very important. I, I think like investing in a, in a juicer is an amazing, amazing thing. Or, or even, even a simple uh, citrus juicer. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I, I'm drinking yeah, orange juice. And after the juicing, um, yeah, water enemas. Yeah, the water enemas are amazing. The, oh, yeah, I do use, yeah. Yeah, I do them, I do them. Um, I, sometimes I'm lazy, but when I do them like every other day, uh, pff, the healing takes another level always. Ah, that's great. That's yeah. good tips to know, especially if people are in bad way, you know, trying to heal and detox. Um, those are great tools to have. People will have to kind of either get in touch with a detox specialist to kind of see what protocol to use. But, I, had, um, I had one. Oh, that's did important. you? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. great. And it's good to know, too, that you had some guidance yeah. to help you with that. Because, um, you know, some things that work for you might might um, not work for others. The water enemas, I've heard, are good. But um, yeah. it's an art. Detoxing is, is an art because you have to yeah. study what you can do for yourself and what doesn't apply for yourself. It's really an art of experimenting with yourself too. It is. It really is. It is an art. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Another way of... With, with, with science, in spite of people thinking there's no science. Yeah. <laughs> for, me, for me, science is nature. That's science, the real science. Yeah. yeah. That's the kind of science I like to follow. Yeah. You, can't, you can't perfect nature. <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, thank you so much, Gabriel. Those are great oh. tips for everyone to watch. And I thank you. I thank you oh. for this opportunity. Really, thank you. Ruth. Thank, thank you. I really appreciate that. And this has been so fun. You guys, um, definitely check out his links where you can find him if you have any questions. And, um, you know, I'll also link to, again, just in case you missed it in the beginning of the video, his um, out-of-body um experience youtube video because i like that <laughs> Me too. Me yeah too. and um so that'll be down below